My sister was a swimmer. She was quite good when she was young, so we spent a lot of time around the swimming pool and she raced a lot at Sydney Olympic Park. So we went to watch her on the weekends and that's where I first saw diving and I was just amazed by it from the second I saw it and I wanted to start. I started diving in Sydney and then I moved with my family to the Gold Coast and then to Brisbane when I was around 11, 12-ish. So then from 12 to 13, that was a bit of a sort of, yeah, really fast incline and I got into an elite squad in Brisbane, got to train with the divers that had just come back and won medals from the Athens Olympics and that's when I really started taking it seriously and put my head down and made the goal of making Commonwealth Games at 13 and, and I managed to do it. For years and years, so I was obsessed with Beijing and going to the Olympics and my whole room was covered in, you know, Olympic sort of memorabilia and everything and I, and I really wanted to do it. So being able to actually make that team was, was amazing for me. I was really, really excited and I had my family go and watch. So I'm half Chinese, so I had my dad and my grandpa and my sister there and that was really special. And it, it was cool because it was my first games, but at the same time I had a bit more pressure on me than, than my first Commonwealth Games. So I did find that a little bit challenging as well and they kept me on a pretty tight leash. So winning the medal was, I was really happy, but also a bit of relief as well when I when I actually hit that goal and it was a goal that I had but also my coaches and the program and everything too. And here we are Melissa Wu the queen of the 10 meter platform forward three and a half somersaults pike. Oh she does it again. I've had stress fractures in my back, I've got disc bulge, I've got a few back injuries, but it's just about sort of managing it. I don't have anything major at the moment, but there's a lot of niggles that are always there in the background. I'm always just mindful of, so I think it's taken me a while to learn to manage them, but I've been lucky to find a really good physio who's helped me out a lot with that, and she's sort of found that they're all connected in certain ways and got me a lot stronger. And I think one of the things that uh, she's really helped me with is just that you become so over-specialised in your sport that often the injuries you accumulate just from doing the same movements over and over. So. It's almost like we focus on doing the opposite sort of movements and, and strengthening the opposing muscle groups and that's helped me to get stronger but also prevent further injuries and, and manage the injuries that I have better. I did find it difficult at a young age to fit in with the group that I was with. It was a lot of older members of the squad and we would go to international competitions and I found it hard to relate to them. And I think too, the program was a bit, it wasn't a great environment and we were sort of pitted against each other quite a bit as well. So I think that that played a big part too. But I think then for me, the motivation then to go and compete and achieve my diving goals was when I got to go overseas and meet other athletes my own age. And that was a pretty cool experience to, to be like, okay, there's people just like me from other countries that are, you know, diving and putting everything into it and making all these sacrifices with school and other things. And then they were friends that I've just had, you know, they've been my lifelong friends now and that was a bit of a turning point for me when I when I felt like it was all worth it, all the hours I was putting in and feeling that I didn't necessarily have people to relate to. I finally sort of found my people and it made me, I think, fall in love with the sport even more. Oh, and there it is. Oh my gosh, we might get some tens from her. Surely a ten from the judges in that time. Mindset's been a huge thing for me and it has been, yes, to do with performance and being a performer, but I feel like that is all sort of wrapped up in mental health and how you're feeling about yourself, your confidence, your self-belief. So when I started working with my psychologist, we actually just kind of stripped everything back and worked on me as a person first and got me feeling better about myself, more confident, and I found that that sort of translated over the diving and that's when I started to see improvements in my performance as well. But it is something that I, I feel like I have to work at a lot and you can get a bit complacent sometimes and think, oh, I've done it now I'm, now I'm good but it's like training we come here and we keep training physically over and over again and I really feel like mindset is the same thing you've got to keep training and you can't just stop otherwise you sort of lose it as well Losing my sister Kirsten was really, really hard for, for me and my whole family. I think it's a thing that doesn't really, I don't feel like it gets better with time. It's almost harder because it's longer since you've seen the person and that's something that we still sort of struggle to deal with, I think, and sometimes are harder than others. But I think for me, having diving and something to focus on really helped me through that period. Because at that point I didn't really think about diving necessarily and leaving the sport but I just literally in the morning when I got up I didn't know how to keep going with life. I didn't know, I didn't want to do anything so it wasn't necessarily just diving, it was just everything. She really taught me that you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or the day after so just live in the moment and don't leave anything you know, out there. Just give 100% to every day and, and then gradually you move forward and, and you learn from it. 
COVID was a, probably good and bad thing for me. It was good in that I had a bit of extra time to actually prepare for, for competition because I was actually really injured in 2020. So I wasn't really going to get any competitions in before Olympic trials. And even though I was struggling physically, I was also really struggling mentally and I wasn't really confident that I would have to just go into an Olympic trials having not competed for about a year and then try and make the team. So I actually started off pretty, pretty bad. I had a few really bad comps and I was actually glad that, that happened because it kind of gave me that kick up the butt to really get on top of my mindset. And then I basically just, yeah, gave it everything. And I sort of had this plan of this is how long I've got to a trials, this is how long to Olympics. And I think that that was a thing that sort of, you know, got me through trials, but then also helped me get that really good result in Tokyo. No athlete can achieve an Olympic medal on their own. And that medal, I think for me, symbolised everybody that helped me get there. And so I was just, that moment on the dais was just such an incredible feeling.